it is official. Myself and the Petamus are rolling to Wyoming. It's happening right now. It's awesome. This is Thursday, October the 5th. And uh, we, we're going to go uh, chase after some, uh, some speed goat. Uh, awesome times. God be with us. So we had planned this trip for a while. We were totally striking into the unknown. Neither of us had ever hunted away from the state of Virginia. I had done a boar hunt previously in Tennessee, but that was like a five-hour drive from the house. So Pete and I were uh, just really striking out and taking a chance on it. We were doing a public land hunt in Wyoming. I had just done a little bit of research on how to, uh, you know, all the, the drawings and, and getting into the, the preference point systems, and, and we had no preference points at that time, so we were just doing a general unit draw, zero points, a uh, really cruddy unit to be honest with you. If you know anything about the draw system, we had zero preference points and we were just going in. I actually lost out on the first point system and did the secondary draw. But we drove and, uh, and we're going into the unknown and we wore ourselves out. It is 1.30 here in Nebraska. Technically for us Eastern timers, it would be 2.30 a.m. I have driven now for 17 hours and it's Pete's turn tomorrow. Oh no. But for now, we're going to stop here at this beautiful rest area in Nebraska and have a nice nap with these truckers. Hopefully they'll stay in their trucks and we'll stay in ours, but it's sleep time. It's pee time and then sleep time and then to be continued in the morning. So, you know, we had about a 17-hour drive that first day. I gave you a snapshot there through the different states we went through. We slept for four hours at a rest stop and then Pete took over and uh, we started through Nebraska and then right here some from um, Sioux City. Really cool statue there, and, and saw lots of cool scenery along the way. Um, you know, it, it, doing it the first time, it was definitely worth it just to do it, but I'm not looking forward to ever driving that far again. I'm not saying I won't do it, but um, we, we, did, we went to Idaho last year, and we flew, and that was way better. But as soon as we got into Wyoming, you can see right there, we ran right into to the antelope, and it was crazy, really how many antelope there were there and I believe I've heard that there's more antelope in Wyoming that there are people and I absolutely believe that because literally right off the bat as soon as we got into the state of Wyoming you could just see these white dots all over the hillsides and it was antelope uh, and, and mule deer uh, you can see there a massive buck and we saw lots of antelope and mule deer, but you know that preference point system that they have, and where we had zero points, and we're just hunting a general um, zero point unit on public land. It was super hard to find animals on public land. All of these animals that I'm showing right now are on are on private land, and you could be on one side of the fence and hunting on public land, and look a hundred yards from you, and on the private land, there's all kinds of antelope and mule deer, and it was that way all day every day and it was very frustrating but we saw antelope we saw mule deer uh, we saw some prairie dogs there were prairie dogs everywhere that was really cool but uh, it, it started to get a little bit frustrating because we drove a lot you know that that style of hunt is more like a it's a truck hunt and here in the video I'm not going to include what I was saying there but basically I was just kind of sharing my frustration we finally found a good chunk of public land that we were going to go walk on and we got in there and basically there was just people everywhere there was horses and a horse trailer park there and people and we tried to hike and couldn't get around them and it was just really frustrating so we drove a lot we glassed a lot um, you know, honestly, since that time, we've started putting in for preference points, and I'm drawing preference points right now before I go back and do another antelope hunt because it was just so frustrating to try to find a good place on public land that you could actually hunt. Uh, now, these turkeys here, these are Miriam turkeys. They are on uh, 
public land. So that was really cool. We didn't have a tag for them, but uh, there was game everywhere. It was crazy, but just the majority of this unit, just because it was an easy unit to draw, it was uh, private land, so that was tough. But in the evening, we did end up uh, hooking up and getting a little bit of success, and that's what you're about to see right now. All right, so we found some antelope, and we found a buck that we will shoot one of us if we can. Well, if we can hit it, we've already proven that's difficult. We got a better setup here to the bed down, to the bipod down. My only concern is the wind, and this is a, the layout of this land. You shoot when you're ready. He's a little bit skyline. Yeah. Alright man, how's it feel? Awesome. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. This uh, bass in their area, man, and the uh, antelope are everywhere. You just can't get to them. There's a lot that happened in between Pete killing his antelope and me uh, getting in on mine here. We actually had a full day and I was really down after Pete killed his. I'd actually missed one and we had a couple rough things happen that were my, it was my own fault. And we had all day, I think it was on a Sunday, the weather was cruddy, we tried to hunt some and just didn't have anything going on. And then we come in on that Monday morning and uh, we, we ran across, uh, you know, a farmer ran these antelope over to us. And I shot that antelope there at um, 300 yards. It was an excellent little stalk in and uh, it, it turned what had been previously, you know, a rough end on that Saturday and then a rough day on Sunday into a pretty awesome Monday. So I was super excited. You can see that's a massive herd of antelope. There was another buck in that group there, and, uh, you know, it couldn't have ended up any better than what it actually was. Yeah. I'll take that all day long. Look at that bullet exit. Holy cow, hey, dude! Home, buddy. Look oh, at them cutters. Cool. Look at the, look how long those cutters are. He's got good width. Yeah. He does have he does have good. He's got good hooks. hooks are pretty good. Look at that. I'll take it, man. After we finished up with our antelope hunt, the uh, landowner there that we ended up hunting on, we we did actually end up paying a trespass fee. We did not kill on private land, which which hurt my heart a little bit, but he had a lot of prairie dogs. You can see there that his land, any of those little mounds that you see is a prairie dog hole. They were just everywhere, and we were not prepared to do any prairie dog hunting. We had big rifles, so uh, he let us borrow a 22, but that was pretty tough. They let you get without a, within about 100 yards of them, but that was about it. So. Um, you know, we, if I ever go back again, I'll, I'll go back with a with a five five six and be ready for them. But uh, we, we we messed around a little bit with a twenty two and had a pretty good time. But after we finished up the prairie dogging, we got to do some sightseeing. We went to the Devil's Tower, which is just maybe about an hour hour and a half from Gillette, Wyoming, uh, around where we were hunting, and that was really cool to get to see that. And we come back through. We were on our way to Mount Rushmore, and we went through. Um, the mountains over to, uh, you know, we went through South Dakota, Deadwood, South Dakota, and got to see some pretty cool sights there. And once we got to Rushmore, of course, that was kind of one of those things, you, all right, we're here, we see it, we're done. Uh, but it was cool to say that we did it. We went on, after we finished up at Rushmore, it was pretty close to go to the um, Crazy Horse Monument that was there in South Dakota. So we... Uh, Got to see that, and, and that was really cool. I think they're still working on it, so it was unfinished. But overall, you know, great hunt, great sights. Home again, Thursday, October the 12th. Pete has taken back over on the final leg here to get us back home. I drove not quite 17 hours yesterday. I think I only made it to about 16, definitely 15. 
and we stopped and we swore we wouldn't go sleep in the vehicle again, but we did. And at this point, I'd be willing to pay $2,000 for a plane ticket somewhere. <laughs> Who knows if I get if we're blessed enough to get the opportunity to hunt <laughs> we, we The cheapness will probably kick in again, I would say. But uh, at this point, I am toast. Oh, you pay. So. I'm done. I'm done. I can't wait to go to sleep. Oh, I know. I'll crash out and be. it'll be bad. There's so much to do. Great trip. And uh, hopefully the first of many. Hopefully. Bless my almighty God. Very thankful. Absolutely.